Private citizens need to follow a simple rule of economics. You can't spend more than you have. Not for long, anyway. But the U.S. government does things a lot differently. It's gone over budget in 44 of the last 50 years, causing the national debt to grow exponentially. So why is Washington suddenly so concerned about it? Because soon everyone could pay the price. Our team of correspondents puts it all in focus. The deficit and debt. And a bid to cover of 2.34. It may look very underwhelming, but this is one of the most important rooms in the U.S. government. 2.34. The Treasury Auction Room is the control center for government borrowing. CBS News senior business correspondent Anthony Mason is one of the few outsiders ever allowed inside. We have a projected stop out. That room is essentially the American credit card machine. It's basically selling what they call treasury bills. They're basically IOUs that we use to pay off the money that we're borrowing. If we can't issue those IOUs, then we can't run the country anymore. We don't have the money. The deficit problem is a clear and present danger to the basic health of our republic. We need a plan to overcome this danger. Russell Long, who used to be the chairman of the Finance Committee in the Senate, used to say that uh, everybody's view of taxes was, don't tax him, don't tax me, tax that fellow behind the tree. The government will collect $2.3 trillion in taxes this year, well short of the $3.6 trillion it will spend. 55% of that spending will go to mandatory expenses like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. 43% is called discretionary spending. That's money Congress controls and allocates to more than two dozen government departments. 2% of the budget goes to congressional pet projects or earmarks. Everybody uh, wants to cut the budget. Uh, they just don't want to cut the budget uh, that affects their constituents. Over the last four decades, the U.S. has stayed out of the red just four years. This year's budget deficit will be the biggest ever, $1.5 trillion. Digging ourselves out requires tough choices. It's practically a political non-starter to cut popular programs like Social Security or Medicare because you know that when you're up for re-election, your opponent is going to tout your vote. And so while members of Congress do feel that they need to make these tough choices, they're very reluctant to do it. They know that their political future could be on the line. This government is too big and spends too much. Should we cut the deficit more? Well, of course we should. Of course we should. U.S. debt has always been perceived as the least risky type of debt because the United States doesn't default. The U.S. counts on citizens and financial institutions to give it loans. In return, the Treasury pays interest as high as 4% on these bonds and treasury bills. Most of the IOUs are held by American investors and the U.S. government, but a third is owned by foreign lenders, like Great Britain, Japan, and China. The treasury owes that country $880 billion. The number one option out there, the safest place for it to place its nest egg, is in U.S. debt. But that confidence may be eroding. Years of running annual deficits is driving the total national debt towards a whopping $14 trillion. A day won't go by that I don't get an email from a trader or a hedge fund manager who says the chickens are coming home to roost. And what they mean by that is every day that we assume more and more debt as a country, it makes us less able, less likely to pay out that debt in the future. Even two years ago, we were hearing from the head of the Kuwaiti Investment Authority that he was worried about the direction that the U.S. was headed in. Somebody has to fund this deficit. If anything, two years later, those concerns have to be even greater because, of course, the U.S. debt is even deeper. Together, we can restrain the spending appetite of the federal government, and we can balance the federal budget. Like any cash-strapped family, we will work within a budget to invest in what we need and sacrifice what we don't. What investors on Wall Street are most concerned with is not necessarily that the deficit is too big now, but that there's no plan to address it in the future. The more Uncle Sam pays, the more Americans pay. 
Interest rates for business loans and mortgages follow the rates the government pays its lenders. In the early 80s, the Treasury had to pay 15% to lenders, pushing 30-year mortgage rates above 18%. We are able to keep servicing this debt because the interest rates are low. The question is, what's the breaking point? And we don't even want to get close to that. The problem with talking about the debt is that it gets into this esoteric monetary policy, blah, blah, blah. The reality is, why do we care about the national debt? We care about it because it affects our lives every day. Explosive economic growth and the tax revenue it generates could help close the budget gap. But that's simply not on the horizon. You have to start thinking about cutting programs. It's going to take an overall refocusing at what we want from government and what we expect from government. And here's a sobering number. If $1 per second went toward the national debt, it would take 425,000 years to pay it off. To learn more about how the debt and deficit affect you, you can go to cbsnews.com.